and welcome to Vionic Studio. In our last video on creating a game using visual scripting, we saw how to move our player. In this video, we'll try to make the camera follow the player as it moves along. Welcome to Vionic Studio. Let's start making games. Now there are different ways to make the camera follow a player. And the most easiest one is just make the camera a child of the player. So you can just drag the main camera as the child and it will become a child of the player. And wherever the player moves, the camera will also move. But this is not an ideal case because if your player rotates, the camera view will also rotate. And if your player jumps, the camera also will move along with the player. And that way the jump will not look natural. So to avoid that, you can use a visual script. You can also make the camera follow a player using Unity Cine Machine. So there is a separate video for that. You can go ahead and watch that. But since we are developing a game using visual scripting, we'll be using visual scripting for this video. So to start with, let's go ahead and add our script machine to our camera. So let's search for script and select script machine. And we'll need two variables. One is the player and the second one is the offset. Offset is basically the distance between the player and the camera. So we'll try to maintain that distance. So let's create our first variable called player. And this variable will be of type game object. You can see that it's asking for a value. So you can just drag our player onto it. Then we'll create another variable called offset. Because we're moving in the Z direction. So we need the offset only in the Z direction. So this will be a float. We'll not set the initial value because we'll get the initial value from the start event and then set it to the offset. So now let's create the graph. So we need a new graph for this. We're going to call this camera follow. Let's save it and click on edit graph. Whenever you are implementing a camera follow, you should do it on the late update and not in the update. The reason for this is you have to follow the player after it has moved and not before it has moved. So when you do it in late update, late update is basically executed after the update is finished. So the player moves and then the camera senses that the player has moved and then it will follow it. So let's delete our update event and let's go ahead and add the node late update on late update. Okay. So inside our start, uh, we need to set the offset. You need to get the difference of uh, Z in of the player and of the camera. So let's go ahead and first is we'll say add node search for transform and inside transform we have to say get position and we also need another get position which will be a transform so this will be of type player to get the transform of the player just drag the player into the workspace and then Select this and connect it to the input of get position. So this will be the position of our camera and this will be the position of our player. Now we need to get the Z value of both and subtract them. So we need to add a node called get Z. So it will be vector three get Z. We have to connect this. So this will give the Z of the transform. So similarly, you have to do that for our camera. So let's connect this here. Okay, so now we have the Z value. So we just need to subtract both. We'll add node and we'll call it subtract. Okay, and the first one will be my player and the second one will be the Z of my camera. So after that, we need to set the value. So set variable. So it's an set object variable and the variable is offset so you have to just take this and set the value to this and we have to do that in the start we are basically getting the position of the player and of the camera subtracting the z value and giving it to the offset variable so in the late update we'll create a vector 3 and we'll set the x y and z value of the vector 3 and then assign that to the camera's position so let's go ahead and create a node vector 3 node so vector three, create vector three with X, Y, and Z. And then we'll just say add node and we'll say set position. So it should be transform set position. 
and here it goes. Then the later update, it will create a vector three, and then it will set the vector three value to the transform of the camera. Now we need to set the values of x, y, and z. So for that, we need to get the player variable. So let's drag the player variable into our workspace. So we got the player variable. So from here, we'll get the transform position. So let's say get position. Okay, so you got the player's position. We have to split the transform into x, y, and z. So you can just say get x. Okay, similarly, you'll have to do get y, and then you have to do get z. So now we have the x, y, and z of the player. So the x will be connected to x directly. And we're not going to update the y position, so we can delete the y. But we need the y position to be equal to our camera's y position. And since we already got the get transform position of the camera, we can just say get y. And then use this value for the y position. Now for the z, you need to add the get z to the offset. So let's first say add. And then here we'll drag the offset. We'll add both the values and then set the value to Z. So that's it. Our camera photo script is ready. Let's go back and check if it is working. Okay, something is wrong. Our camera is actually moving forward. So let's see why that is happening. That's mostly because of the offset. So let's see what is the problem. Offset is basically set to 3.5. So wherever my player moves, it takes the Z of the player and adds a 3.5 to that. So it's basically you have to subtract 3.5 and not add it. So let's go back to our graph. Let's move it here. Let's remove this and let's connect it here. So now it should be the camera position minus the player position. Okay, it's not supposed to do this. So you have to get that from here. Okay. Let's see if it works. Okay, it looks like everything is working fine. The player is moving forward and the camera is following it. And if I move left and right, the camera is also following. It. And there's no jittery movement. So that's it for the camera follow. In our next video, we'll basically try to spawn obstacles and we'll make the plane spawn again and again so that we have an endless plane. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.